Okay, everybody, so we're on to the sixth and final video for our practice for the landscape with a building project. Um, and a couple things as I was doing while you were catching up with me is I uh, finished off drawing some more branches on my tree. Yours don't have to be nearly as in, in involved as mine. They don't have to be as big or as branched out as mine is, but get the essence of a tree existing in the foreground and one in the middle ground right? That's uh, one, of, one of the requirements for this practice work. Um, I also uh, went back in and I, I reestablished the lines of the house, the building, where I accidentally erased to make the, the tree be in front of it. So I did some accidental erasing here, so I just put my ruler back up and I redrew the edge of the, the building up to the line of the tree uh, once that was done. And I did it in this area too. Didn't do it as well as I could have. Um, uh, and I redefined a little bit. This tree is overlapping this corner of the house because this bottom of the tree is lower than that corner of the house. That means it's closer to us than the top of the house is there. So I can bring some of the branches of this tree uh, in front of that part of the house to show that it's a little closer. All right, so it helps to redefine things. Now notice here on this sidewalk, I've drawn a vertical, I'm sorry, a, a line going back to the vanishing point that's just maybe a, a, a quarter or less of an inch from this edge of the sidewalk right here that went back there. I drew another line parallel to it, not parallel to it, but would be in real life, going back to that vanishing point. Um, and then I started where this crack or segment of the, the sidewalk was placed. I put my ruler at that, that line where it meets up with this first edge of the sidewalk, and I drew a line going uh, vertically from that line down to this this line so that that helps to create the the idea that the street is a little lower than the sidewalk it shows that um, there's that that vertical distance from this line down to the second line and just like with the original um, lines here you don't want to overdo it you don't want to make them too big too too stand outy you want to make sure that they look like they're disappearing as they go farther and farther away from us. But that helps to make the street look like it's a little lower than this part of the ground. And we could do the same thing on this side. So I've got this line and this line for the sidewalk. I put my, my uh, pencil right on the same vanishing point and about the same distance away from this line as I have it from that line at this end. And I just draw, move it a little bit more. I just draw a line going back to that same vanishing point where all the edges of the sidewalk meet. Now it kind of disappears as it gets into that space because it's so far away, it just kind of merges into it. And once again, I can take a vertical line going down. I'll move it over to this side so I can see what I'm doing. Goes down, another vertical line here. And that helps to create that idea that the, the street is lower than the sidewalk. Yeah, I could have put in, a, in my neighborhood, we've got what's called a boulevard strip of more grass and stuff between the sidewalk and the ground. I could have moved my sidewalk over here and had this be in the boulevard street. There are lots of different things that you could do with your final project that make it more interesting and more unique than just a, a copy of this. Um, as you're doing this, I want you to remember you need to include hills or mountains in the background. The background starts just below the horizon line and goes, um, goes to the horizon line if it's part of the ground. Now, if I was gonna draw mountains, I wouldn't wanna start them up here because that would mean they were floating in the sky. Mountains exist on the ground, they're part of the ground. They're just higher than the horizon line. So we're gonna start, I'm just gonna say, okay, my mountains or hills start right here. There's maybe a valley that the road goes through. So the hills just start a little bit lower and they end at the edge of the house and they just kind of go around here. Oh, look, there's the mountains. Whoa, nice, right? They come out, come behind this tree, go back up again maybe, or maybe this mountain here is in front of another part of some mountains there. Oh no, maybe we're gonna have to put a tunnel in through that mountain there. You can be creative, have fun with it. So, you know, um, mountains are, uh, pretty high so you can make some higher peaks if you want to or you can keep them pretty low um, as rolling hills. I'm gonna put in another mountain here and we're just gonna maybe assume that maybe there's something that helps to um, this reminds me of the mountains in Utah right um, makes it look like uh, 
it just disappears into the mountains. But, you know, sometimes there are things that happen before that. Now, where this mountain inter is interrupted by, this is kind of maybe the foothills. This line needs to kind of go away, and then the foothills just kind of merge into it. I think that's a little too much down, so I'm just going to pull it back out. All right? I want to think about what's logical. Okay? So I'm going to take a little bit of... I don't know why I erased that. I'm just going to... That's the horizon line, right? I'm going to take a little bit less of it that way so it looks a little uh, more believable. And I'm going to soften up the horizon line a little bit. It's in the distance. Okay? I'm going to get rid of my vanishing points, soften up the horizon line here a little bit too. And now it looks a little bit more believable. It looks like it's in the distance because it's less, less bold. Um, let's see, another thing we could think about is a doorknob on the door. Um, here's my eye level, here's my body, my feet coming up to the door right there. So I want a knob, knob to the door that's at my hip level, which is right about here. It's about a third of the distance up the side of the, the door, and it's not too big, right? We don't want to make it stand out too much. Um, I could put window panes into the windows. So the way to find the, um, if I was going to divide it into four panes of glass, I wouldn't just divide it in half and half like this. I want to find out the optical center, right? So I just draw a little, a, a line that goes from corner to corner and corner to corner again, like we did for the peak of the roof on this face. So from corner to corner, here's the optical center of that window. Now here, I'm going to put in a vertical line that's parallel to the back and the front edges. So the distance from here to here is a little bit more than from here to here from our view. But if we were looking straight on at that, uh, that window, it would be um, in those places. Now, I think this window is about half above and half below the, um, the horizon line. And you can see that where they intersected, it does come about that way. Um, but if it didn't, I could still uh, use that intersection of this line and this line to draw in a, ver a horizontal line that uh, would be parallel to the to the um, vanishing point, uh, to the top and the bottom edges. So there's there's the window, right? The same thing on this one. I already know that this is the vertical center here. That was from my peak. So I'm going to draw the, I'm, I'm not going to put them in there, but that would be the way to do it too. Um, let's go ahead and do it. So there's that. It wouldn't be the same actually because it's not right in the middle of that wall, right? There we go. So there's the true center. And then parallel to this front edge is, is the window pane verticals. Whoops, I, boy, did I miss on that. Being off just by that eighth of an inch really makes a big difference. So here, here's my, my center point. I want it to go right through that center and it needs to be parallel to the front edge. There we go. And then once again, it's a little bit lower than the horizon line on this one. So we're going to put it up next to it and from there to there. Now there's the, the window panes for that window. All right. So that's the process of, of taking it farther. I want to remind you have the words aerial perspective practice along the right, the left hand side and your name and period number on the right hand side. Take a photograph of it. Remember, guys, when you take your photograph, put your camera right up in front of it, but don't have cast shadows. If you're standing in front of it in a way that you're casting a shadow like I'm doing right now, it's harder for me to see your work and to grade it. So when you're taking your picture, use your zoom uh, function rather than doing this to get a picture of it. Hold it back farther and zoom into the picture so that it's inside your picture, uh, uh, your um, uh, format for your, your camera's photograph right? Zoom in with that function. Um, and then remember to send it to me at d-l-e-c-l-a-i-r-e -E at s-e-q dot org for me to give you your grade. Good luck. We'll talk to you soon. Uh, our next uh, pre-work is our final pre-work for our big picture.